Good morning, my lovely tens. Right, buddies, we're back to online teaching again. I can't believe I've got self-isolation from the COVID app, but oh, it is what it is. And let's let's crack on and keep doing all of this really good learning, um, but online instead until next Friday. So yeah, gutted I can't be there with you, buddies, but. Um, but hopefully this is good as well. I've got you in the computer room most days, so I hope that you've remembered your headphones today. Um, and if you haven't, I hope we figured out a way to share with somebody. Um, and I hope that you remember them for next time. So remember your headphones. I've got the computer room booked for, for most of our lessons. Cool. Right, buddies. Um, today's lesson is Factorizing Quadratics. So that's what you should put into your book, is the title Factorizing Quadratics. Now, just in case you're not sure what a quadratic is, it's kind of anything that's in this format here. So this is what's called a general one. It's x squared plus bx plus c, um, but that's just a bit wonky. That's a bit technical. Uh, if you look at it, these guys are quadratics down here, like a and b. Uh, they're quadratics, buddies. They are quadratics because um, there's a term with a squared in it, essentially. Um, and that's it. There's a term with a squared in, and there's a term with an x in, and there's a term that's off by itself. Now, here's the trouble. Our topic that we're doing right now is factorizing, uh, which means we're putting, we're putting the brackets back in. But if you look at these two questions here, just look at A maybe, for instance. Um, is there anything common that I can factorize out of all three of these things? Well, no, actually, right? So normally when we do a question, so I'm just going to jot one down over here. Normally the questions that we've done so far may have been something like this, um, plus maybe 8a squared. And you guys would look at those and you'd be like, okay, right, well, 4 and 8 both have 4 in common. Um, that's got an a cubed, that's got an a squared, so they both at least have an a squared. Um, what do you times 4a squared by to get a cubed? Well, it's missing the a. What do you times 4a squared by to get 8a squared? Well, it's missing the 2. That's the kind of factorizing that we've done so far. But, buddies, it doesn't work here because the um, there's nothing in common. It gets a 1 and a 5 and a 6. Um, that's not got anything in common. This one has an x squared. This one has an x. And this one has no x's. That's not got anything in common either. So, oh dear, I guess we can't factorize them. Unless we can actually factorize them. And let's do it. You can actually factorize them. Uh, the only difference is these are going to factorize into two brackets. So in other words, we're kind of unfoiling them. Ooh. Okay. So here's how you do it anyway. Write down ax squared plus bx plus c. And pretty much all you have to remember is this. We're always going to be looking for two numbers. Two numbers that multiply to get the number at the end, so whatever the c is, so in this case, in this bottom one, they'd multiply to make 6, but the same two pairs of numbers has to add to make the thing in the middle. So we need to find a pair of numbers which times to the number at the end, but add to the number in the middle, time to the one without an x, and multiply to the one with an x. We're just going to ignore the x squared at the start just for now. We'll do that a bit later on. So here we go. Very first question. Here's how it works again, buddies. We need to first of all find two numbers that times to make 6, and it's a positive 6. And we need to find then the same two numbers that has to add to 5. So in other words, they have to times to make 6 and add to make 5. I like to put this little jotting thing to the side every time as well. I'll always do this, and I think you should do this as well, because it makes the question easier. Two numbers that times to make 6 and add to make 5. Can you think of what those two numbers would be that times to make 6 and add to make 5? That's right! If you said it was 3 and 2, you have got it, my buddies! It is 3 and 2, the two numbers that do that. Um, the trick to figuring it out is you only need to think about 6, really, and think about pairs that make 6. Think about factor pairs. Um, so you start off, and you're like, okay, I can make 6 by doing 1 times 6. Um, then you say to yourself, can I combine a 1 with a 6 to make a 5? Um, well, no, actually, because one of them would have to be a minus number then. Um, so you move on to the next one. What about 2 and 3? Can you combine them to make 5? Yeah, absolutely, it is 2 and 3 then. And guess what, buddies? It's going to blow your mind. But the answer, to this the answer to this question, then, is just simply this. 
it's x plus 3 in a bracket, and then x plus 2 in a bracket touching it, and that's the end of the story. So, you just put them in a bracket. Now, I know you might not be happy with that, so that is the answer to the question. That's the final answer. Um, but I know some of you will be like, Ooh, I don't know why that comes about. That's a bit like cheating. I don't quite know why. Um, for those of you who want to know why, let's just, just, just confirm that it actually works. Okay, if I was going to foil it, so this is just kind of an extra step here. If I was going to foil it again, let's foil it. Well, x times x makes x squared, which is confirmed. Um, x times 2 makes plus 2x, good. 3 times x makes plus 3x, and 3 times 2 makes 6, which is confirmed. Now, 2x plus 3x go together, and they make 5x. So this whole question is x squared plus 5x plus 6, which, oh my gosh, is confirmed. So our trick absolutely works every single time, and that's all you've got to remember. Times into the number at the end, adding to the number in the middle. Uh, once you've got those two, oops, oh, drat, I erased too much. Once you've got those numbers, um, you're done. Bish, bash, bosh, it's over. So, woo, here we go. One more for us to try together. If you check this one out here, um, what do we times to make? What do we plus to make? I just put little bullet points next to those. Well, what is it times to make? If you said 21, times into the number at the end, you're right. What number does it add to make? 10. And now here comes your deciding part. You need to think of two numbers that times to make 21, but add to make 10. The way to do it is just think of any two pairs of numbers that times to 21. So how about 1 and 21, the easiest? Well, no, that won't combine to make 10. Uh, 2 doesn't go into 21, so that doesn't work. Um, 3 does, though. 3 and 7? Oh my gosh, it is 3 and 7, my lovelies. So 3 and 7 have worked. So our two numbers are 3 and 7. As you know, then, this is just x plus 3, x plus 7. And that's your final answer. So they're actually only one-step questions once you get the hang of them. Um, just to confirm that it works, you don't have to do this. I'm just going to do this just to show you. Um, x times x is x squared, confirmed. x times 7 is 7x. 3 times x is 3x. 3x add 7x is 10x, confirmed. 3 times 7 is 21, confirmed. It worked. Hooray. Cool beans. Here we go. What you should do now, my buddies, is you should try C all by yourself. There's something weird with C, but I think you can do C on your own. Um, if you really want to have a good a good try on your own, try D also. It's got negatives in, but that maybe won't even slow you down, so we'll have to see. So pause, have a bit of a go, go. Okay, buddies, and you're back. So here's what you should have done. You should have had your times and your plus. You should have said they're times into 16 because 16 was the number at the end, and they're adding to 8. So you have to think about two numbers that times to 16 but add to 8. Okay, well, it's not 2 and 8 because that would to make 16 because that's too um, big. Um, so then you would have gone to 4 and 4, which is right. The answer to this is x plus 4, x plus 4, like a boss. Now, there's only one trick to it, and the only extra trick there is, is, do you notice that these two brackets are the same? Yeah, they are, right? They're both x plus 4. Well, what you got to do then, buddies, is there's just a shortcut way of writing that. And you know what it is. It's x plus 4 squared. Cool. That's just a shortcut way of writing down two things that are times together, just like how x squared is x times x. <clears throat> so really good work. And here we go on the last one. Um... We're harder here now because it's minus is in. So this time, we're looking for two numbers that times to make minus 15, but add to make minus 2. So we had to consider the minuses, remembering that the minus belongs to the thing in front of it. So that's what we're remembering, and that's what we're doing. And so here we go. Two numbers that times to minus 15. What I would still suggest, even though it's a minus, just think about the factor pairs. So does 1 and 15 go together? Uh, no, they can't put a 1 and a 15 to make a minus 2. Right, so on to the next. How about a 2 doesn't go in? 3 and 5. Any way of putting a 3 and a 5 together to make a minus 2? Well, yeah, actually, there is a way of putting a 3 and a 5 together to get a minus 2. In that way would be to have a minus 5 with a positive 3. 
because minus 5 plus 3 would make minus 2, and minus 5 times 3 is minus 15 because the signs are different. So, bish bash bosh buddies, x minus 5, x plus 3, and you guys should be feeling legendary at this tough topic, but still feeling legendary. Cool. Last two. Last two. Bang. I want you to pause and just do these two all on your own. Same thing as last time. Watch for the minuses. That's all. Um, this one here is a bit funny because there's not um, there's not a number touching the X. So pop a one in there. Go. Pause. Figure it out. Okie doke. So I hope, buddies, that you were getting the right idea here and you're looking for numbers that times to make 30 and add to make minus 11. So here's what I would say. Um, two numbers that times to make 30, well, it's not 30 and 2. That can't combine to make, or sorry, it's not 15 and 2. That can't combine to make 11. It's not 30 and 1. That can't combine to make 11. Um, 30, what else goes in that? 3 and 10? No, still can't make them into an 11. So 4 doesn't go in. 5 and 6? That's the trick, that's the ticket, my lovelies. It's a minus 5 and a minus 6. Because a minus and a minus makes a plus 30, and a minus 5 and a minus 6 makes a minus 11. X minus 5, X minus 6, like a boss. Cool. And the next thing I'm going to get you to do is this one here. Times is in pluses. Times is to make minus 42, but it has to make plus 1. So I'm going to pretend I just spotted it straight away. Um, 42. 7 and 6 are some good numbers to make 42, um, and they're actually the numbers we're after. Which one has to be positive, though, of the 7 and the 6? Because that's actually our factor that we want. Which number has to be positive? Well, if I'm after a positive 1, the 7 better be positive, which means the 6 is the negative 1. Signs are different, so they times to make minus 42, but 7 takes 6 is 1, so that's our answer. x plus 7, x takes 6. Now, I hope you feel okay at that. Um, normally, if it was a real lesson and you weren't being covered by a cover teacher, I'd stop now and give you a chance to practice. Um, but I'm going to persist just a little bit more, okay? So don't forget, you can come back and watch this little section again if you feel muddled when I give you the work. Just please have a little re-quick watch. Put me on 1.5 times or something and um, have another little quick watch. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm going to move on to the next topic just because it's a weird lesson and you're, and you're being covered right now. So here's what we'll do next, buddies. In your book, title is Difference of Squares, okay? Um, okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, Difference of Squares is actually the same topic that you were just doing. We're going to be factorizing, but the one difference that you're going to spot here, I'm just going to move this out of the way, and I'm going to bin that one off for the sake of, for the sake of time. Okay, so here we go. Difference of squares. Now, here you go, buddies. <clears throat> difference of squares is exactly what it sounds like, buddies. There's a difference, you know, in math means that it's a subtraction, right? Difference means take away. So if you notice, in this question, there's a minus, and in this question, there's a minus, and in this question, there's a minus. So all of these are subtraction questions. Therefore, all of these are differences. Cool? Um, and it says of squares. Well, you know what a square is, not in terms of like a square with four sides, but when you're talking about numbers that are squared, for instance, three, what's three squared? Well, nine, exactly. Squares are square numbers. They're ones that have square roots. Cool beans? So 25 is a square number because it's got five as its square root. 49 is a square number because it's got seven as its square root. 100 is a square number because it has 10 as its square root. 6 is not a square number because there's not a number that you can times by itself to make 6 exactly. So it's not a square number. So here we go. Check it out. 49 is a square number. And x squared is a squared number because it's got a squared on it. x squared is a squared number. 49 is a squared number. That's a subtract. This is a difference of squares. Is this one a difference of squares? Yes, because 25 is a squared number because it's square roots. B squared is a squared number because it's got squared. And it's a difference because it's a minus. Oh my gosh, squared numbers all over the place. And this one here, is it a difference of squares? Absolutely it is because 16 is a squared number. Um, 81 is a square number. X squared is a square number. And there's a minus. It's difference of squares. Here you go. Whenever you want to do a difference of squares, my buddy, buddy, buddies, 
Here's what you're going to do. It's nice and easy peasy. It's a weird thing to remember. I'm going to show you why, but I'm going to do that at the end to give you an opportunity to skip it if you want. So here we go. Here's what you've got to do, what you have to know how to do. Um, if ever it's a difference of squares, it's simply going to be this. Two brackets. Bracket, 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 bracket. And here's what you do. You square root the first thing. Square root the x squared. Well, the square root would cancel the x squared, just leaving x. Cool. What's the square root of 49? Well, 7. Put a plus there. 7 x plus 7. What he goes in this bracket? Same but backwards. x minus 7. Cool. Check it out. It does work. x times x is x squared. x times minus 7 is minus 7x. Seven 7 times x is plus 7x. Minus 7x plus 7x is no x's at all, 0x, which is why there's no x's in there. And 7 times minus 7 is minus 49. So whenever you get a difference of two squares, my buddies, all you need to do is have one bracket with the, you square root both things, and you have one bracket with plus, one bracket with minus. Done. Cool. How about this one, the 25 minus b squared? We'll use the same trick, my buddies. Um, what's the square root of 25? Well, it's 5. What's the square root of b squared? Well, it's b. What do I put in between them? Well, plus in this instance, and minus in this instance. Done. No problem, eh? Um, it seems weird. I'll explain why it works in a sec, but it seems weird, but it works, believe it or not. It's just the square root of each one, one with a plus in the bracket, one with a minus. So here's your real challenge. Can you do that one, which is way harder? without me teaching you. Go! Okay, let's see if you got it. Let's see, let's see. So, let's see, my buddies. Um, square root the first one was 16 square roots to 4, x squared square roots to x, 81 square roots to 9. What do I put in the bracket? Well, a plus in this one. How about this one? So, the second bracket was the same, but backwards. No problem. You've got it. And um, that's how they always work. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so here's what I'm going to get you to do, buddies. For the rest of this lesson, I'm going to explain why. So listen to the rest of this video. And then I'm going to give you an option of watching why this works. Um, but for the rest of this time, I'm going to get you to do two things. The first thing that I'd like you to do is, on your computers, go into My Maths, okay? So, I th I f yeah, whatever, you know what the password is, just to get into the basic one. You don't need to... Uh, you don't need to log into your personal one. So, into algebra, into algebraic manipulation, and this is on show my homework, so you don't really have to memorize it. Algebra, algebraic manipulation, go to factorizing quadratics one, click online homework. Now, here's what we're going to do. What you're going to want to do, my buddies, is just click practice. Cool. This is it. You just need to work a few of these out. So in this case here, x squared plus 7x plus 10, two numbers at times to make 10, add to make 7. Well, hopefully you'll be starting to get good at it now. 5 and 2? You're right, 5 and 2. x plus 5, x plus 2. Um, finish all them out. Um, click mark it. Hooray, I got 2 out of 16. Oh no, but I got 2, I got it right, the one that I tried. Do all them lot. Then... Do all this lot. Oh my gosh, it's difference of two squares. How does it work again? Well, you square root the x for x. Um, you're going to go plus in the first instance, 4, because that's what the square root of 16 goes to. x minus 4, because it's the opposite. And boosh! Homework is finished. Hooray! And I got 2 out of 11. That's what I want you to do first. That's step 1. And step 2, buddy buddies, is you're going to go into your Kerboodle textbook. Um, it's on page 376, which you can get to by, by typing in the bottom down there. And um, the questions I want you to try, and again, this is on Show My Homework, you don't have to memorize this. Um, can you just try for me? Oh, let's do the left-hand strip. So do question 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, 25, and 28. So just go down, okay? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 questions. When that's all done, I want to see these 10 having been uploaded to show my homework for me to have a look at. Um, make sure you check the answers there in the back of the book, of this textbook. And that's it. So, yeah, that's it for me, buddies. Uh, good luck. Get it all done. Um, if you don't finish the 10, just make sure you finish them for homework, because I'm not going to set you any more homework, okay? This is just, while I'm away, your homework is to finish what we started in class. So those 10 on the left, you can work together if you need to, but do try to be independent. 
And that's that. So if you want, you can stop watching me now. If you'd like to see how the difference of two squares works, keep watching. So bye buddies who aren't going to keep watching. Good luck. And buddies who are watching. Here we go. Why does difference of two squares work? Well, it's like this. Check out your x squared minus 49 here, buddies. Bang. Ooh, it didn't cut and paste. There it is. x squared minus... I don't know why I'm cut and pasting. I can just rewrite it. Stop being so lazy, Mr. Wade. Okay, so check it out. x squared minus 49. Well, why is this difference of squares working? It's working because if you think of this, you can actually rewrite this as x squared plus 0x plus 49. Do you agree? Yeah, because it hasn't got an x. So if you put 0x there, it's cool. Which means what two numbers, because now we can do it the old fashioned way, which two numbers times to make, oh, it's a minus 49. Oops, 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 oops. I can say to myself, what two numbers times to make minus 49, but add to make zero? Well, those two numbers, buddies, are seven with minus seven. Because the signs are different, they times to make minus 49, but because of the same number, seven takes seven is zero. So x plus seven, x minus seven, that's why it works, okay? So I know it felt like a trick when I explained it the first time. Um, it's not a trick, though, so that's it. So, yeah, thanks for listening, the people who stayed tuned in, and carry on. Good luck. See you later. See you next time, buddies. Bye!